Hey, Brent Portia at TopVelocity.net. I'm doing this video on hip to shoulder separation. So pretty becoming a more popular concept, something that I learned about in my career through uh, Tom House. Uh, I think it was a big contribution in his career was talking about this ability to separate the hips and shoulders. It was really a profound thing for me when I was first playing, coming back from rotator cuff surgery and developing a lot of what I call 3x pitching a day um, and, and really understanding hip to shoulder separation. I put a different twist on it, really understand it better for me from the lower half and that's why when we talk about it with 3x pitching, we're talking about it from a lower half to upper half perspective approach. And, uh, but it's, it's really key, there's a lot of studies that have come out over the past decade that's really proven how powerful it is. For example, studies show pitchers that uh, our high velocity pitchers had a more open hip position at front foot strike with a more closed uh, hip position which mo was more accurately defined as what they call separation timing, meaning those who had a larger margin between when their hip speeds would peak to when their shoulder speeds would peak, the more time between that, those were typically higher velocity pitchers and studies showed they typically were healthier pitchers, put less stress to the arm because when that's happening, you're better using the kinetic chain. So a lot of people always ask me, is this good hip to shoulder separation? It really is hard to define in a picture. It's something you really have to see in video or better to see it when you're measuring the biomechanics like with the 4D motion sensors. So you can actually see where the hip speeds are peaking and the trunk speeds are peaking and you can measure the time between. So to really understand it, that's why I'm holding on to the whip. So when we're using the kinetic chain, it's like a whip. So when I talk about the whip, I think a lot of people want to think about how the whip relates to the arm and throwing. You want the whip to really almost relate to the entire body. So for example, let's how we'll break it down. If this is the handle of the whip and I'm holding on to it, this is the center of mass right here. This is where all the energy is really going to be pushed into it. The arm is really like your legs. So I'm going to define the handle of the whip as my hips, my hip complex, and my ability to hold and move that like my legs being able to push and drive my hips, right? So this is your legs, this is the, the hips. Now the meat of the whip, the thick, thickest part of the whip, uh, where, where most of the energy is coming from as the whip moves, uh, as far as pushing energy up, is going to be that body of the whip. That's going to be the trunk. So really, when we go to create the energy through the handle, most of the energy is going to be uh, created and, and moved and transferred right here in the meat of the whip. And then the end of the whip would be like, like the arm. So hip to shoulder separation would be like in a whip, saying the more, you know, for example, if I do a whip this way, okay, where I start it from the down, I carry it up, and then I reverse direction and I make it go fast enough that it breaks the sound barrier and, and gives the pop. The key to that was the moment right here where I reverse direction, where the handle went down as the end was still coming up. And that's that hip to shoulder separation where the handle's forward and the end is all the way back, just like what we're talking about here, where the hips are all the way through, the power is generated, and the upper half is loaded all the way back. That's what we're trying to create here in the throwing or pitching delivery. So when we come down the mound and we generate the energy through our leg drives, which if you want to learn more about that, I have the videos on the leg drives, learning back leg drive, front leg drive. That's going to drive the hips. And if we can keep the shoulders closed, that's going to allow maximum energy to be created as there's time to gather and transfer that energy up the kinetic chain. So the challenge is the timing and the ability to convert the extension and the, and the drives through rotation through the hips. And that's going to happen with the feet. The feet, what we call... We have to sync the feet up. We all define this in the top velocity programs and the 3x pitching programs in our mechanical system where we sync the feet up, we trigger ro rotation by opening front foot, and all we have to do once rotation is started in the system, we just have to power rotation through driving the foot. That's way more complicated than that. I'm not going to get into it in here. That's something you come to the top V programs. We're going to teach you that. But if I'm maximizing power through my drives and converting that into hip rotation, then my trunk, as my hands break, needs to counter-rotate against the hips, meaning turn against the hips. As I line up glove side, as I flex and cock my arm, now when I land and stabilize and the hips open, my shoulders are closed, 
Then I set up glove side to create some stability like a fulcrum. Then the upper body is going to then come around following the back hip driving away from the back shoulder. That will pull the shoulder through. The arm just has to sink up and cock and get in position to most effectively ride the trunk and allow the trunk to then peak and create its energy before the arm goes. So the ability to maximize hip to shoulder separation is the ability to do like the whip. Create maximum power here, convert to hip rotation, peak hip rotation, counter the trunk, delay the trunk, so we then can increase the margin of time before the trunk speeds peak. And the larger that margin, the more hip to shoulder separation. And like I said, that's gonna take more stress off the arm because the arm has more time to sync up and transfer more of the energy coming up the body that you were creating in the leg. So it can get very complicated if you don't really understand how the, the legs work and the kind of energy you can create from your legs as opposed to you trying to create it from your arm. Once you really start to learn the legs and the, the forces and the work it does and then how it sequences or times up the body between the hips and shoulders or what we call hip to shoulder separation, that's when you really start to maximize performance, optimize your body, optimize the kinetic chain and you start being able to pitch not only more at a higher level, but you, be able, you can withstand a higher level because you're more efficient at that level. So it's, it's really the only way to do this. Uh, hip to shoulder separation is a, a foundation. It's a big piece to how to do this. So uh, if you want to get more in depth than that, that's what I recommend you come into the Top Velocity programs to really learn it. But this is a really key piece for you going from an amateur, low velocity, or even an injured pitcher a high-velocity, professional, elite, high-velocity pitcher.